And then Kyoso. Kyoso. Do you remember what that meant? Kyoso. It has Hashiru in it. Kyoso. Uh, running away, I think. Close. It means to have a race. So the first two are set in her Kuso no Sekai. So it's set in a fantasy world. But the last line, she actually goes back to reality and goes, let's, let's race. So this is just the lines before are the setting of the race. So she's just having fun, but she's making sure her brother understands her goal is for them to have a race. But let's yeah. pretend that monsters are chasing us. Uh, but what exactly do these two lines say? Hora is like, see or look, and oikakite kuru. Mm-mm. Something to do with walking. So, kuru. Let's go towards. That's a good guess. So, kuru in this context. So, there's different contexts. So, in some contexts, it could mean to go and come back for something. But you've only been taught kudu to mean something is coming toward the viewer. So the oi kakete part means to chase. So something which has been dropped off due to context. Uh, sorry, not o, it'd be wa. Something is uh, oi kakete ing an and jack is the idea. And oi kakete means to chase. So something is chasing Anne and Jack is kind of what it means. And it's coming toward them. Interesting. How about uh, Mori. The, the most important part is uh, kakureru. Mori e kakureru. So Mori e is just forest and then kakurenaku. Hmm. So nakya just means you must. You we we must do kakureru. Kakureku. Kake ka. Kakurenbo no kakureru. To leave or exit. No, that's a different word. That is a different word. You remember kakurenbo? I mentioned it before. It's a game children like to play. All right, hide and seek. Yes. So what does kakure mean? To hide. Yes. Exactly. So we must hide. Where must they hide? In the forest. Yes. Toward the forest or in the forest. Kyoso yo, which is it's a race. The yo makes it like a it's kind of. It's making it into like a statement. It's the race of hiding from dinosaurs. And how about our next line? Uh, soito ani wa hitori de mo, um, mori no hohe oho e hashite hashite ite shimatta. Yes. So, first off, we have so you. Do you know what so you means? So you. Sounds so familiar to so you. I heard that all the time. But it's, no, something it's different. It's almost a set phrase, but the meaning can be separated out. You. Do you know what you means? You is to say. Yes. Basically. So, so, like, so this now, or so you, or so re. So no. So this ne. What does soul in this context mean? Soul means over there. Um, so it, it basically it's referring to something that's already been mentioned. So less than soko, which would mean over there, it's more like sore or sono is the kind of so. So sore means um this thing is what it means. And sono means this thing, but you're attached, like it'd be sono bun in this context, or sono i kata or something. So so tends to mean like, mean kind of like you said that. It's kind of what it means. So like so this ne is like agreeing with something somebody said. So so yeah. you means, so you said something. And it's kind of like paraphrasing it almost. 
making it like a quote. That's why uh, Sode kind of works that. So basically, she says, Hora, oi kakete kuru, mori no kakure nakya, kyo so yo. That's what the so part is. That so that's like what you said. You. So because of this, so you to becomes so you as a sentence and to as the particle between two sentences. You know what that to is? It is not the same to as in between two nouns. Yeah, it's almost the same, but between two sentences. Yes, it's a little bit. So, different. yeah, it's not just and it has a little bit more meaning to it. That has to do with time. Uh, happening at the same time. So to actually means one thing happens, then the second thing happens. So that's why it's good to double check with these things. So event oh, okay. one occurs and immediately after event two occurs. Well, theoretically, they could kind of happen almost at the same time, but event one needs to happen. Kind of is like what it means. But the important part is normally event two, if that makes any sense. So event two is important, but event one is needed to happen for event two to occur. Got it. Which is a complicated way to put it. So normally it's first thing and then second thing. Because if she didn't say this, Annie probably would not have just suddenly ran into the forest. That'd be weird. You're just like walking with your sister and suddenly, bam, she just runs off. Runs off. She didn't say anything. She just, Wah! Her goal was to make me chase after her, but she didn't say anything. She just left on her own. That would be weird. So that's why they use toe here to kind of have that. This happens, then this happens. Um, so now we're over here. Annie wa hitori de mori no ho e hashite itte shimatta. So mori no ho e and mori e basically has the exact same meaning. But do you know how it's a little bit different in like how you would word it if you wanted to word it differently? So mori e would be towards the forest, but yeah. mori no hue is away from the forest. It's still toward the forest, but it means toward the direction of the forest. They just added the word direction to it. Oh, okay. Which is whole. That, that's all they did. So... Did she enter the forest? I don't know. She didn't, it didn't, it doesn't actually say. Um, she she runs toward the forest, and we know we can no longer see her because of the itte shimatta part. Uh, but uh whole just means she ran, she went in the direction of the forest, the that forest direction. So they could have just said mori e, and the sentence would have the exact same meaning. Like, there'd be no confusion about what's going on. They just wanted, they thought it would be too plain to have morie and morie twice in a row. Because it's mm. a book. Um, how about the hitori? This one is just different, yeah. yeah. Hitori is on its own. Oh, sorry, on their own. So just yes. one person. So, yes. And what about hashite? To run. Yes. And do you remember how hashite ite is different than hashite kuru? Uh, I think it has to do with direction. It kind of does have to do with direction. So let's say we have Jack, who is our protagonist, and he he is um he's thinking something, and there's somebody here, and they are moving either this way to the left or this way to the right, and Jack's over here. Which way would use kuru? Kuru would be towards, so left. So in this specific picture, if Jack is over here, it's toward Jack. So it looks like right is going toward Jack. So I'm not totally on it on my hands. <laughs> but Oh, towards the speaker. Okay. So toward whoever is thinking, which is Jack. That would be the kuru part. So iku, which is the ite, is away from the speaker, the person that's moving. So that's why we use ite in here, because Annie is running away from Jack for the goal of having a race. Sorry, I think this clears the whole page, but I'm doing something. 
How about the shimatta part? Shimatta. Shimatta is like, oh crap. Basically. I think that's what Jack said. It, it just, so it's not, so uh, translating it as, oh, oh, oh crap. It's like, theoretically, it's like a bad way to translate it, but that's like the meaning behind it. Like it's the feeling of, oh crap. Yeah. So Jack feels this when he sees this action happen. He goes, he's sad, basically. You feel sad when Shimata is at the end of a sentence. And it's just conveying that like, oh, Annie has completely went toward the forest and ran off. She's gone. And Jack is not happy about it. So definitely the it's it's the oh crap meaning. But if you translate it with oh crap, Annie went to the <laughs> you could do that. That'd be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's more like oh no annie w- ran off all by her own to the forest <laughs> could be i guess how you'd put that oh no <laughs> yes uh so why don't you tell me what this means all together without me breaking it up to little bits um so basically a soito is like whatever was said previously and then ani mm. hitori de mori so direction of the forest alone yeah. hashite she ran to the direction of the forest alone yes and then suite uh, shimatta which was just the feeling jack felt shimatta was a feeling jack felt and ite is something that is not needed in english but is needed in japanese so there isn't a way to really translate this part naturally into an English phrase because ite just means she left basically so she ran and left toward the forest I guess but you couldn't really say that because if she ran toward the forest obviously she left she left yeah made by context but in Japanese they're like this is important please, please let me know that she left it's very important to mark this it, it gives it more thematic <laughs> uh, how about the next sentence uh yuhi ga uh, mori no mukou ni shizemi hajimete iru right so mukou has the almost the opposite meaning of whole mukou means opposite or like behind you exactly so we're opposite of the mori Mori no moko. What does yuhi mean? Do you remember? We have he, like kaiyo or nichi or he. Right. What what is what does he mean normally on its own? On its own, I don't know. Oh, do you know what nichi yobi means? Sunday. Yes. And what's the first part of the word Sunday? Oh, it's that word. He. Sun. <laughs> so, so sun. Uh, sun, sun, sun. The word sun in English and nichi, it just so happens, nichi also means sun. I see. It has the meaning of day. So the he part of this is the same as the he in nichi obi. And it means sun. And then we have you. This you kanji is uh, found in lots of words for evening. Let me just. Like yukata, I see it all the time. Yeah, yukata is a perfect example. I was like, how do how do I spell yukata? Was kind of thing. Yukata. I'm not sure how to spell that word. My first thing I found was yugure, but like that's not a common word. Like it is a common word in books, but like that's not what we're taught in our textbooks. <laughs> you mm. means a twilight hour. But yeah, exactly. You you cut that is like the word in my head, but I can't remember how it, how how it's pronounced. <laughs> this doesn't show up. It should be you cut that because you is long. Wait, is it, is it that? What's wrong? But yeah, you mm. the you part of this means like nighttime, basically. So you have nighttime plus 
light plus sun. So nighttime sun. That's what it means. Nighttime sun, which is evening sun or whatever. So this right here basically is not really talking about the sun itself. I'm going to pretend there's water across from the Modi. And it's like the sun has already went by. -bye. And then we have our evening sun right up there. If that makes any sense. So what is so it's kind of like the afterlight? Yes, the afterlight. Exactly. So there's still light out, but the sun's basically gone. However, this Yuhi, the after effect of the sun, the afterlight, it is right now Shizumu is what it's doing. Which does not mean Shizuka. This is a different word. Yeah. It's not Shizuka. My hint is kind of look at the kanji. Some things can help. There's a water radical in there. And, and it's sinking. Yes. Uh. Exactly. Shizumu means to sink. So that's why the yuhi, the, the evening sunlight, is beginning to sink. So in other words, it is beginning to get darker. Hajimete. What does hajimete mean? First time or starting. It is starting. Um, the, this So for, hajimete can mean first time when it's not in this conjugation, if that makes any sense. So this is a compound word. We have shizumi right next to hajimete. So this always means to start the verb. Always. When it's combined oh. like this. So when it's a stem form of verb, so uh, shizumi mas would be um, mas form of this, shizumi mas. And you delete the mas and you add hajimete. Hajimete. And very commonly, hajimete will not have kanji. Uh, it did have kanji here, I think, in the book, but it, uh, like, it's okay to have this kanji. If you have hajimete, this kanji, then it's wrong. <laughs> I think this is the first time ever kanji is this guy. So different kanji, I think. Yes. So yes. All together, what does this say? Let's double check. So you remember? So the sun is, or we'll start from the beginning. Um, you, he got, so the sunlight or the afterlight, yeah. Mori no muko, behind the forest. Mm -hmm. So the sunlight is behind the forest and it's starting to sink. So that could be correct. However, what I know about this context is that we have a protagonist that's standing somewhere and his little sister Annie has run toward the forest, which um, I'm gonna make this right here to be the forest. So because of this, our protagonist is over here. So everything that we see is from the protagonist's point of view. So because of this, toward the forest, which would be behind the forest, would be the sun setting. Instead, we have muko, which is across from the forest. So because of that, that should be behind the protagonist. So this is only context information. Uh, with just the information itself, it could be behind the forest. There's nothing saying it's not. But I do know the protagonist is in between the forest and the sun setting, if that makes any sense. So it's like midway. Yes, just because of I know where he is. Theoretically, he could be like over here and there could be a forest over here and then like water over here with like the sun setting. Like we're, we're not. And then like, I guess the sister ran like at a diagonal angle, but that'd be kind of weird, right? Yeah. Like to imagine it's possible, but I think in general, we can assume that the sun's behind him. But with just the words, it could be behind the forest, but context, it's probably in front of the forest. It's, it's across the street of the forest. The forest is facing the water somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Probably behind the protagonist. Uh, that's the only reason why I, I'm correcting. Just, just context. Because grammar, possible. Uh, next part. Um, 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 uh, 
he got richayo. So I see is that he same as in yuhi no he and nichiobi no yi he. Oh, nichiobi. He mm mm. Hmm. So mosugu. Sounds familiar. Yeah, it's a very no. Mosugushi is also used. Uh, they kind of have almost the exact opposite meaning. So mosugushi means like almost give me more time. If that makes any sense, like I need a little bit more, is what mo squishy means. A little bit more. There's a little bit more that I need, but mo sugu has almost like the opposite meaning. Like in a way, it means like really, 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 really soon. That the sugu that you have sugu means soon, and you have mo of it. So mo is always more of it. More kind of yeah. So it means super duper soon. So basically, almost like immediately, but like not immediately. Like it doesn't mean almost immediately. immediately. But yeah. yeah. And then, what does he mean? Do you remember? He is the sun. Yes. And what is the sun doing? You can guess Kuricha from the context. Kuricha. Um. Kuricha. What kind of like right now in our setting? The sun is setting. Yes. So he got kuricao means like basically it's going to be dark soon. The daylight hours are ending. If that makes any sense, the sun will be fully gone. Is growing the heat. The sun goes dark. Something like that. Um, chao. Do you remember what chao does? It's very interesting. It is the vocal form of something else we've already seen on this page. Do you remember? Chow. 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 Um. Mm, trying to look back here. <laughs> oh, shimatta. Yep, shimao is the. If you want to do the same form, shimao and chow suddenly seem a lot more similar <laughs> than shimatta. Shimao, chow. The thing is, shimao is kind of hard to say. Can you say shimao? Shimao. And compared it to chow, chow, chow's a they're lot kind of different. different. Like, yeah, they're, they're similar sounds, but like chow, a lot faster than shimao. Uh, so because of that, when people are talking, and they don't care about their speech, they use chow. However, right over here was a narrator. They're being very care. They they're using nice. Japanese basically because they're the narrator. They're using short form, but they're using like essay Japanese almost. Um, just without de aru, just they use da. While whenever the characters are talking, they add more colloquial forms of the word. So this is normal short form, and this is colloquial short form because Jack is speaking out loud. There's no reason for him to be polite to somebody. Compared to us, we're the we're we're really listening to this, so they want to be the narrator wants to be kind of polite to us. So shimatta, but he's talking so ciao, ciao, yeah, yes, perfect. And what is the next line? Um, Jack wa shin, hmm, that circle shin poi ni really really close. So poi, uh, would at, oh sorry. Poi does have that little circle mark, but it had have a second had to have a second line up there if it was poi. So this is actually pa shinpai. Hmm. Shinpai. Shinpai. Shinpai ni natsu natsu kita. So dekita. So or is that guy a little bit smaller than the other? That is a bit smaller. Yeah. So it's not dekita. Not dekta. Yes. So this is the dictionary from this would be naru. So shin by ni naru. Do you know what shin by means? Shin by means to worry. Yeah. <clears throat> so we know that Jack is now worried because you know soon the light's gonna go out. It's gonna get dark out. Oh no! And Annie has ran off in the forest. However, do you know what the um, ninaru means? 
to become. Yes. On its own, at least. Yes, that is, that, that's exactly to become worry. Then we have kita. What does the kita part mean? Kita means west, I believe. Uh, kita or was can it north? Mean west. You are not. Oops. You're right. Kita can be a weather. I know I saw that went by, but I'm like, hmm, how'd that happen? Uh, um, uh, I think that's north. Uh, Nishi is west. Nishi. That's, this one's west. So west, west is that one. But yeah, kita does mean north. So you're not incorrect in that. However, this is actually like the kudu that we saw in other places. So before I actually kind of taught you this like a little bit wrongish, like I told you it was kind of like, it smacked you in the face, which it does. So kudu is kind of like, there's like a cat and it wants to like catch something. So it's like, it's trying to like follow them and it's like following the, the prey for a bit and then it jumps at them. And kita is a moment it has jumped at them. So what this means is that Jack has been feeling a little worried for a little bit before this. Like right when she ran away, he kind of was like, mm -hmm. But it didn't like hit him that he was worried until this moment is when it like hit him. He's like, oh God, it is getting dark. But like before he was like a little worried. And then boom, it's kind of what means. Like, sudden jump. Sudden yeah. jump in the amount of worry he had. So with just Shinpai ni Naru, it doesn't really convey any of that meaning without the kita. It just means to become worried. Uh, did it, but this right here kind of gives it, it's like, you know, like when you're in a roller coaster and the thing's like, Kita ah! gets this roller coaster like image that, oh, he was going up on the roller coaster and oh my God, Chimpai. That's, I should have did roller coaster. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> so that, that's what Kita is doing. So it makes it, I guess you could say more dramatic. Gives a more nice flair to it. Yeah, we did a lot of lines. And mm -hmm. uh, this part, this is something Jack is saying out loud. Ah, Ani, mo kairu. Oh my god. Kairu. Kairu. The, the, the uh, dictionary form is kairu. And now we're at, we're using kairu form of this. Kairu. But you're right. It is kairu. That is where this is from. What does kaidu mean? Uh, to return back. Yes. So if you just said um, kaidu, that just means go home. There, there's no extra meaning to it. So we use ro to add a little bit more natural flow to this. What do you think ro adds to kaidu? Ro. Uh, uh, maybe putting emphasis? It actually it makes it almost like an invitation, kind of. It means let's is how we normally translate it. Uh -huh. So it means let's kairo. Let's kairu. <laughs> let's kairu. kairu. Rather than just go home. It, it makes it a kind of like almost like the order, but like living it open, kind of. <laughs> how about mo? Do you know what mo does? Mo just makes the next word yeah. more emphasized or like exactly. more of it. So it's kind of like saying, let's go home right now, Annie. Let's, let's like, let's hurry up. Let's go home. Exactly. However, this happens. Uh, shibaraku matemo. Matemo. Annie wa modoite kunai. So right over here, yes. Modotte konai. Modotte konai. Yes. So first off, shibaraku. What does that mean? Shibara. Pretty sure I said this last time. It sounds like a name. It, uh, it does kind of almost sound like a name, but this is actually a time phrase. Uh, it's a very common time phrase in Japanese. And it kind of just means like, like a while almost. Like, like, and it, and it tends to be used with like to wait for something like there's shibaraku normally means like there's nothing going on during this time. 
So because of this, it's very common to be used with matte. What does matte mean? To wait. Yes. So a lot of times it's used with to wait, to be like, you like to, to wait for a while is kind of what it means. Shibaraku matte. Um, it can also mean like for the time being or anything like that. So do you remember what mo, what happens to mo when it gets added to te? It does not mean also. It has a different meaning when it's with te. Temo. Uh, does it mean? No, it doesn't mean that. It's going to say including, but that's something That nice. is a good guess, but it doesn't have any of that including or more. It's, it, it means like um, even if basically so even if you wait a while is what this is mm. even if you wait a while ani wa modotte konai you know what modoru means from modotte modotte i mean if i had to guess it's like something to do with waiting it actually doesn't have to do with where how about kaidu do you know what that means to return yes so kaeru actually has a little bit more meaning to it it doesn't exactly mean to return do you remember exactly what kaeru means like where are mm. you returning to with kaeru uh in this case you're returning home so kaeru is almost always used for returning home it I, I don't feel like it's really used if you're returning to a location or at least not normally. So returning, so he's saying mo kairo means Annie, let's go home already. And this modotte means return without going home. It just means returning to a spot you were before. So that means Annie will konai, so we have a negative form, will not return home to Jack. Because Jack is not at home, right? Yeah. So but that's why they're not using kaite konai. Because Jack is not at the location of home. That would be weird <laughs> to use that. That sounded so wrong when I said that out loud. <laughs> so modotte would be used for returning to a non homey location. How about konai? This is very similar to kuru and kita. It's the negative form of it. So what does this mean? Hmm. <clears throat> it has to do with the speaker. So, konai. Konai. Is not, it is, well, not something. It is definitely not something. So do you remember what kuru meant? Like, for example, in oikakete kuru. Oikakete. Mm. Well, it doesn't mean black. I can cancel that out. Yes. It does not mean kuro. 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 How about, do you remember what the oikakete meant? Oikakete. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Trying to get context here. Uh oh, mori e kakurenakya means we must hide in the forest. Kyoso means it's a race. Oi kakete kuru. Um kyo wait. Ma bakimono wa oi kakete kuru. Bakimono wa ani to. Running away? That's a good idea, but um, why would someone be running away? Because the monster is chasing them. So, oikakete means chase. So, the one doing the chasing is the bakemono or whatever was it, kyojin? Is that? I don't know. I don't remember. Bakemono. Bakimono wa hani o oikakete iru. That's what I'm going to do. Oikakete iru, which means 
the monster is chasing Annie. I'm just like, there's, there's no good place to put it. <laughs> so the monster is chasing Annie. Bakemono wa Annie o oi kakete kuru. Now, if we had, so I'm going to actually, I had a brilliant idea. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so we have bakemono wa Annie o oi kakete kiru. And bakemono wa Annie o oi kakete iku. Actually, I'll do, yeah, iku. And bakemono wa Annie o oi kakete kuru. So all of these sentences right here in English would be the sentence, the monster chases Annie. They would be the exact same in English. However, they do have a little bit extra meaning in them. This, these two convey extra meaning than this one. And they're meanings that do not get conveyed in English uh, outside of context. But it's important in Japanese normally. And it has to do with the speaker or the narrator. Do this sound a little bit familiar? Yeah, it's the direction, right? Yes, it is the direction in relation to the speaker or the narrator at the time of talking. So um, it has nothing to do with the sentence itself, but the context in which the sentence is being used. So it's 100% something that does not occur in English, which makes it hard to like remember. So iku means this action is occurring away from the speaker. And kuru means this action is occurring toward the speaker. So bakimono wa ani o oi kakete kuru means that the monster is chasing Annie and it just so happens that it's heading toward Jack. Oh my goodness. And with bakimono wa ani o oi kakete ku, iku, sorry, oi kakete iku means that the monster is going to be chasing Annie away from Jack. So Jack is safe. He's like, woo. He's a, he's a lot happier with Iku than Kudu, perhaps. Yeah. If he's heartless. <laughs> so um, these are 100% fun things in Japanese that do not occur in English. And Oikagite Iru has none of that like narrator being involved. It just is a statement. There's no positioning or narrator inside of the bubble. So uh, it's just fun things, fun things about Japanese. Where am I? Yes, we are over here. So here we had konai. Konai is the negative form of kuru. And what does kuru mean? So kuru would be away. Kuru would be toward the speaker. Oh, ikus away. Okay. So what does the konai part mean then? So not towards the speaker. So Annie will not return towards the speaker. Annie wa modotte konai. She will not return towards Jack, is what it says. So in English, we wouldn't say that. We just say Annie will not return. We would just say Annie wa modotte inai or something. Modotte inai. <laughs> modotte inai. Something like that. Just the negative form of iru to make any will not return. But in Japanese, they're like, hey, we have our special narrator. He, he, he has a special place in my heart. Got to keep him here. So they use konai to make sure he's like almost like a member of the story. Um, in a way, it's involving you more in the story. Because when reading this, you're like, oh, the monster, Annie won't come back to me. Is kind of what it interesting, it, yeah. It makes you more engaged. It includes you with the story almost, which is probably why I would assume they're using that. I don't have a literature degree in Japanese, so that part could be wrong, but it makes logical sense. Um, Annie, Jack says this. Suruto. So this toll is the sentence toll. Do you remember what sentence toll does? 
even if. Oh, that's a different word. That'd be the temo we saw over here would be even if. Temo. So it's and, but the first event happens first, then the yeah, second. Exactly. And sudo just means, you know, to do. So in this context, so suruto is like a phrase in Japanese that is very commonly used. That it's kind of like a set phrase. And it just means they did what was mentioned in the last line and then. So that's why they don't have um, sore o suruto or so suruto. Like they decided that's not needed because it's just said so often in Japanese. So they're just like, let's just shorten it to just suruto, you know, because we, we know what you're talking about. It's very clear by context, which is the yelling of Annie. So Annie's name was yelled, and then this. Uh, Annie no koi ga kaite kita. Yeah, kairu, noboru. So what does koi mean? Koi. Does it mean good? Or not? Yoi. Koi, koi is. Koi. Hmm, mm, mm. So koi. Eh... Like right here. Uh, I think that'd not be really. Koko. That'd be koko. Similar words. Uh, koi is what Annie is kind of doing in the next line, which goes, Oni chan, toto kite. That is Annie's koi. So, oh, voice. Yes, the voice. Nice. And how about kaite? The kanji is a little bit different from kaeru. So the meaning is a little bit more similar to modoru. Kaite. kaite. So. I'm not sure. Mm. What does kaeru mean? The first one means to return. Yes. To return where with Kaidu? Uh, home, probably. Home. And Kaidu can only be used with Ningen, with humans. Or maybe animals. Uh, how about Modoru? What does Modoru mean? Modoru. Uh, modoru. We had it earlier with Annie wa modotte konai. So, modotte konai. Modotte so, won't return back to the speaker. So, what does modotte mean without the nai part? Uh, return back? Yes, return. So, kaite has the same meaning of modoru. However, modoru is being used with a ningen. Ani, isn't it? And kaite is being used with koi. How do you think they're different? Hmm. So, koi. I guess the voice is going towards the speaker. Uh, the voice is going towards the speaker. Wasn't really the question I asked. So kaite is used with non-living things like objects or the voice. So what's going on with koi ga kairu with this kanji means the voice returned. So um, that, that's all it's saying. The, it's not a human being, basically. Modotte was being used with ani. So if it said ani wa kaite konai, that would be weird. That would be like, what? Is, is Annie a robot? Is, is she not? Is, is, what? So, hmm. Moru is being used with the human being, and Kaite is being used with the object. They both mean return, but their subjects are different. Different. Okay. It's kind of like how we have Iru and Aru. You remember those guys? So iru is to be alive and aru is like ing, like yes. something uh, that's just there, kind of. Just there. So aru 
is like kaete with that specific kanji. And iru is modotte. So that's all what's going on there. The kita part, though, you said this earlier, which means, uh, but I'm not sure if you like fully got that, but that's going toward the speaker or the narrator. So Annie's voice returns to Jack or goes toward Jack. And what does Annie say? Uh, Oni-chan, uh, chotto kite. Nice. What does that mean? So big brother quickly listen or listen here, something like that. That's a good guess. However, kite to listen has a different kanji than than kite, which is short. Kite means to listen. So kite. Doesn't that seem a little bit similar to kita or konai or kuru? Interesting. It kind of does. Yes. And that's because they are actually related. Kuru, the verb kuru, is an irregular verb that has multiple forms. And it has this kanji. Kuru, kita, kuru, kuru, kite, kuru. I don't remember. <laughs> Konai. I don't know. It's it's an irregular verb. I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Um, and this means come. Like come here, come there, come hither. And it contains that same meaning basically with adding like a speaker context to special sentences when it's um being used to conjugate things. But on its own, it just means come. So, kite, onichan kite means big brother, come. Come. Toto just kind of like softens it a little bit. Like, just come a little bit. Just a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Do you know why we have this in te form right here? Kite. Rather than like, toto kuru, for example. Why, why is it kite and not like kuru? Uh, so do that now. That's not right. What is Annie doing in this sentence? Is she like making a statement? Is she... she is. She's actually ordering somebody. She's not making a statement. She's telling somebody to do something. So, chotokuru means um, big brother can't, will come a little bit, would be what that would mean. The kite is kind of like um, uh, kite kudasai. It's like, please. please that would be please come here. But they just went, no, please. Just say kite. We don't need pleases. I'm the little sister. You're my big brother. Why would I say please here? <laughs> so, because of that kudasai, it's crossed out, and we just have kite. Uh, that's basically what happens. So te, if you end a sentence with te form, it is a order. An order. And it is a rude order. It is not polite at all. It is, it's very like, do it. Do it, big brother. Come here. So she's, she's being very much, we are family. Come here, big, big brother. Um, now I'm just going to do a quick little refresher. What does kaite mean? So kaite means, well, this kaite is to return yeah. or kaite, yeah, to return. Yep. What returns with this kaite? The voice or a thing. Yeah. Something that's not a human. Nice. Um, do you know what nagara does? Nagara. Nagara. Yomi nagara, boy nagara, kusai nagara. Mm, mm, mm. I remember, was it a while? Yes. I don't remember. Exactly. Oh, it was. Exactly, you're right. You did remember. It is nagara. <laughs> it is wild. Nagara. I was like, not, I was like it is nagara. <laughs> Hi. Oh, sorry. I clicked the page. Ooh. Yeah. Why are you glitching? Okay. Okay. 
So this is a random word. Do you know what yada yada means? Yada yada. Good grief. Good grief. Perfect. Okay. Knowing that's good grief. Um, this right here is another little refresher. We have two sentences. Their meaning is exactly the same. Can you read them for me? Uh, Pennsylvania. Shiode. Shiode. The second is Pennsylvania or Pennsylvania. Yep. Shiode. Oh, okay. The whole thing. Also, like the first sentence. Oh, yeah. This is the sentence. It's kind of confusing because it goes. It's, it's horizontal right now. <laughs> So, Jack to Aniwa Nawabashi go de tree house e nobota. Yes. And how about you read number two as well? Pennsylvania, Shu de Jack to Aniwa Nawabashi go de tree house. Ni no bata. Yeah. So it's e and ni, which are different. So e and ni in these contexts have the same meaning. So basically, ni has extra meanings. It's like a big daddy. And inside of ni is e. So e is used with location to have the same meaning that ni is having here. And it's used to add flavor to sentences. Same, same with English, how we'll add like a versus the or something. I don't know. That's probably not a good example, but it just adds like flavor. So, so your sentence is not boring. You don't want to use ni over and over and over and over and over again. So they're like, yeah. we'll just use eh. We'll just use some eh. So I have illustrated what nobota means in this contract. So I'm not sure. I think I feel I feel pretty happy with my picture. Tree house. So listen it. And we have uh, Daku or Annie, I don't know, one of them, and they're on a nawabashi go. And they're nabotta. Well they're 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 nabotte. They're near no near nabotte iru. That's what they're doing. Nabotte <laughs> iru. Uh nabotta means they already completed the noboring, which would mean that they would be. I'll do red for that. They'd be up here. Ah, uh, already. Yeah. So, nobota, what does that mean from this context? Do you know? I'm guessing to climb. Yes. And how about namabashi go? What does that mean? Uh, was it rope ladder? Yes, exactly. So, to, so this one here means they, they climbed using a um, rope ladder like up the treehouse, basically. They climbed like into the treehouse or something like that. And ni has the exact same meaning. So ni and e have the same meaning, except ni has extra meanings in certain contexts. Like it can be used with time. E cannot be used with time. With time. And e says no to time. It's like, I cannot handle that. I am only location. So now we have this nice old sentence to read. Mm. So Jack wa yare yare omoi nagara. Sure to read that. To. No... to. Oh, forgot to. To omoi nagara mori no uh, naka e haiteita haiteita. So, uh. Do you know what this to is doing? It is not sentence to, and it's not noun to. Yari yare to omoi nagara. So while he's saying yare yare. So we have, that's close, but we have omoi, not you. Omoi. Tasty? <laughs> That'd be uh, oisi, oisi, or... Umai. Oh my, that's the you're word. probably speaking umai, which means yummy. We have omoi, which is very which is from omo or omoi <laughs> Omoi does mean heavy. Um so omo from omoi mas the verb. 
it's not omoi like heavy <laughs> um and similar as kangairu you know what kangairu means to think yes so omo also means to think the in general omo and kangairu in english tend to have overlapping meanings uh kangairu tends to be more like special thoughts like new and original thoughts and omo tends to be more just like stating something so um he he felt yare yare so he omo omoid that so it's just it's like making a statement with momo while kangairu is more just like thinking as an action if that makes any sense like i wanted to think about the secrets of the world you would probably use kangairu kangairu yeah well if you're like uh i was thinking one plus one equals two you'd use omo omo so that that's if, if that explanation makes a little difference if it's confused you'll just see lots of examples in, in the future so yeah so while thinking yari yari. jack what did jack do uh where is that mori jack no yari yari. Ah, mori no naka e. naka. Naka. do you know naka, naka. Hmm, naka mono is the closest, but mono is thing, so naka. naka mono. Hmm. I think you're thinking of nakama. Maybe not nakama. I've never heard of nakamono or nakayoshi. Hmm. Uh, Something to do with companion. That's all I remember. If you look, their kanji is actually a little bit different. So the naka and nakama and nakayoshi have naka plus hito which the hito part is why we kind of know it's with people it means like to get along with others or to be comrades in the same group is what that naka means so when we take out people from that we kind of just have um so you know in japanese how they have an in group and an out group have you ever heard that saying I haven't. In the soul. You haven't heard that? Man. No. <laughs> I don't know. I heard that like so much before I started learning Japanese. They'd be like, they're in Japanese culture, weird things. Like you take like a Japanese history class, and they're like, there's the soto and the uchi. And they do like a whole like weird like separating the in group from the out group of people. It's kind of like how their polite language works. It is polite to label your relationship with others. So, like, for example, rude japanese is a japanese you use with your parent with your family so like in english when you want to be polite like you'd be polite to your parents you'd be like oh hello could you please give me blah 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 you would never yeah you would not use polite japanese in japanese <laughs> no so what's polite is to use the correct um relationship between you like to label what group you are in if that makes any sense so like it's kind of almost like a misdemeanor to like call uh impolite japanese impolite japanese because it's polite to use impolite japanese to your parents when you're trying to be polite to them like, I yeah know, i get like it that. like i think that's such an interesting like thing about japanese um so like naka we have a square and then we have a line in the middle naka means middle <laughs> oh okay that's a big, point. A big little like spur. just tell you that means middle so you can then i think like the reason why i went on the spur is that the in group is the group in the middle so the people you're in the middle of are your nakama is, is where that was coming from so like normally you use you learn naka first which means middle and then you learn nakama the kanji for that and that's how you like build kanji meaning the the people who, who you're in with you're not outside of them you're in with them you're in the middle with each other <laughs> so that's why that long ass story got told but naka means um in the middle so it's the same as if you went to like mori no oku which i feel like would be more commonly said in this context which is into the depths of the forest so they just he just goes in the forest hide that this means enter. To enter. Yep. So now we have ita. What does this mean? I've heard it a lot. You have. Ita. 
is the so, opposite of the uh, kita. So entering away from the away from Jack. Plus, so this book is kind of written like we are like a magical narrator that is like floating, normally following Jack. However, we we saw um Jack walk off and we're just kind of like watching him. We're like, huh, bye Jack. And Jack was like, do 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 and he kind of like left us. <laughs> he doesn't know we're here because we're, we're just kind of like floating. We're like, oh, bye Jack. Because basically this book is written in third person, right? Yeah. Jack go up. And because of that, um, in English, we have something called like the omniscient reader or something like that, or the omniscient POV, I think, P-O-V, P-O-V. Uh, that's what it's called in um, English. And it's English, when like, yeah. it's the idea that there's a God watching the events going on in your story, following different things. So this right here is our God of the story. He is kind of floating around everybody and he tends to follow Jack around and has a little bit like special power to read Jack's mind, such as when Jack went yada yada. <laughs> but like for whatever reason, he's following Jack around. Um, for whatever reason, the he's kind of sit, it's kind of like you think you could think about it like if you're filming something, how you have like a screen going on and you can see stuff going on on a screen on TV. So you kind of have the camera set right over here on a tripod and we see Jack, now Jack's leaving. And then we're gonna do like a scene change. It would be a different way you could think about this. So Jack, Jack is leaving the scene. Interesting, all right. Yeah, little, little narrator has been left behind. Oh, that's there for a different reason. Okay. Um, so we've seen lots of like knee and stuff. Uh, ni tends to mean towards something. So what does like ni ushiro, like I'll write like nani ka, which means something. Something ni ushiro. What does that mean? Something ni ushiro. So something's going towards something. Good guess. <laughs> Theoretically, that is not wrong. Uh, what does ush do you know what ushiro means? It's a new word, theoretically. To walk or run? It's one of the two. It doesn't mean that. So, uh, hashiru means to run with a hachi. And aruku means to walk. To walk. So, ushiro is a word we haven't seen yet in this specific thing. I just didn't know if it would. It, it's a fairly common word, so it could have been in an Anki deck you could have looked through at some point. So, ushiro means behind. Oh, now I remember. <laughs> yeah. So um, with ni ushiro is actually listing a location right over here. So nanika ni ushiro means behind the nanika. So um, rather than the location, like I'm not sure how else you could like think about that, but it's just I'm just making sure you understand that. Um, like for example, we could have. Um, uh, tatemono. Do you know what tatemono means? It means building. Yes. So tatemono ni ushiro would mean behind the building. Does that make sense? Yep. Nice. Uh, next thing I have, do you know what giniro means? It's this kind of <laughs> It's kind of iro. What, what does giniro mean? Uh, gold, I'm guessing. Yes. Uh, specifically, iro of gold color of gold <clears throat> exactly and then we have kagayaku which is kind of kira 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 what does kagayaku mean the little gif here i don't know if you can see it on your screen <laughs> stars colors sparkles. Uh, it means um, sparkles yes to oh, shine or sparkle kagayaku so gin iro ni kagayaku Altogether, what do you think this means? The color of gold shines. It actually means it shines in a way that is like gold. Oh. So doesn't it like kind of make sense? So ni is kind of like 
describing the way in which the verb is being used almost. So ushiro behind is like the building. We're describing the location ushiro as behind the building. So we're describing the way in which this kagayaku is as goldish. So this is just a weird um, way to use me. <laughs> but like, uh, it, it kind of like makes sense in like vague kind of way. Like that's weird, but like, oh, I, I guess. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. So yeah, that, that's why this is on here like that. I was like, oh yeah, we gotta, gotta do this guy. He's, he's hard. <laughs> so it shines very goldy. Okay. And more new vocabulary. I thought since uh, Yuhi, do you remember what Yuhi means? We used this earlier. Yuhi, yuhi so hmm. has kanji of sun and the first one says you. So settings, uh, no, was it nightlight? Nightlight, yes. The, the setting sun, it's like, it's, it's like the evening light. That's the night light. Evening light. So next is abiru, which is a verb. And the picture I got was a lizard. And what is this lizard doing? It is sitting on a rock. What what do lizards do? Why why do lizards sit on rocks? Do you know? I actually don't. Oh, so lizards are cold blooded. <laughs> Here's a scientist. <laughs> lizards are cold blooded, and this means that they cannot warm themselves up, and it means they do not like the cold because of this because they can't heat themselves up. So instead, what they do is they lay on rocks when it's sunny and they absorb the sunlight is what they do. So abidu kind of means to like bask in something. And it's also used when you take a shower, in case you're wondering, like you bask in water. It doesn't have to be. Abidu, yeah. Uh, But I use the sun because whenever I think of abidu, I always picture a basking um, lizard (laughs) personally. And it, it is quite common for something to bask in the sun, abidu. Um, do you know what kochi means? It's kind of like koko, but what does kochi mean? Kochi is like this way, um, yeah. that way. Uh, it does not mean that way. It can only mean this way. It's only this in way. the direction of the speaker. Oh, okay. It must be. So if it, it's common in like a restaurant for someone to say, kochi e dozo. And then the waiter who said that leads you to your table. So they can't just point and say, kuchire dozo, like point. That would have made sense, yeah. Doesn't work. The, the waiter has to walk you to your table to say, kuchire dozo. Um, next new word is kinoha. Do you know what ki means? It's a pretty common word. People love that kanji. It's like the number one first kanji people learn. Shrub or tree. Good idea. It is tree. Ki. And then we have noha. You know what no does between nouns? Uh, possessive. Yes. So we know a ha is something that can belongs to a, most trees. I think old trees. In some leaves. Way. Yes. Right? Ha oh, does okay. leaves. Exactly. Kino ha means the leaves of the tree. And I have this picture right here of a branch with trees on it. And if you look at this picture, we have a setting sun. And it's light is kind of like being like absorbed in the leaves, kind of like you can see them through and they're kind of shiny. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So that's just an image I wanted to show you as you read this line. Mm. Oh, no. Oh, 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 but you have a dip. <laughs> that's key. I don't know how that got there. <laughs> oh, okay. So, <laughs> kino wa, oh, kino haga. <laughs> Keep going or? Nope, that's the sentence. Okay, yeah. (laughs) So, what is our subject? Kino waka. Or, sorry, haka. Ha. Kino ha. Kino ha. So, that's our subject. Yes. Kinoha. What does that mean? The leaves of a tree. Yes, the leaves of the tree. And um, what have they done? So, you hear so the sunlight, the evening sunlight. Abiru, 
is kind of absorbing it. Yes. Well, it's absorbing the evening sunlight. And. Kiniro. Kiniro. Ni kagayate yuru. Kiniro. Kiniro. So gold color. Yes. Ni kagayate yuru. Kagaya. Kagayate yuru. Hmm. Um, I mean, I have to guess it's sparkly from all it those stars. <laughs> so the leaves of the tree have absorbed are, are currently like basking in the, in the evening light, causing it to kind of glisten in a very uh, goldish way, such as the picture over here, kind of. Um, I would assume that they're probably a little more healthy looking leaves with maybe yeah. water on them, like dew droplets, making them sparkle better. But this was a quick picture I found on the internet that kind of illustrates what they're kind of saying here. The, the leaves are kind of glistening. They're, they're almost kind of goldish a little bit. They squint. <laughs> uh, and then this line, please. Um... こっちお兄ちゃん。あ、こっち。こっちお兄ちゃん。こっちをお兄ちゃん。早く。早く。早く。Okay. So quickly break brother this way. Yes, exactly. And that is where we're going to stop for the day. Um, next week, uh, it's like Christmas right around this time. Yeah, it is. <laughs> we will not be having this next week. But oh, good. So I'm just letting you know. I'll probably be out as well. So it's nice. all good. All good. Yeah, we'll be pausing right here. We did a lot of refresher and we did some new stuff. Yep. Okay. Nice. Did you like me going through the vocabulary with you? Yeah, that was pretty helpful. Okay, because I just double check if that's something you like. Because some people are like, no. <laughs> it's like the probably one thing I do like about Japanese, just learning new words. Totally. So yeah, I'll be doing more of that in future lessons, doing the vocabulary and the grammar. Nice. Um, so bye. See you two weeks from now. Yep.